All right, today we are going to talk about sigma notation, um, also known sometimes as summation notation. So it all starts with the Greek letter sigma. This is sigma. Okay, there's going to be some equation here. Okay, and we just call this the general term. Okay, you're always going to have some starting value. Okay, and whatever the variable for the function is, is going to match this. Okay, so we call this the starting value or the index. And then at the top of our sigma, you're going to have some ending value, which we're just going to call k for now. So you have the Greek letter sigma, you have some function, and you have some starting and ending value. All right, so let's look at some examples. Uh, so we are going to write in expanded form and find the sum. So we have our sigma, uh, we have our starting value of four, we have an ending value of seven, and then we have some function. So how we do this, we take the first number and plug it in for n. So we're going to have 3 to the 4th plus 1. Plus, because this is a summation, 3, and then we're going to go up by 1 until we get to 7. So 3 to the 5th plus 1, plus 3 to the 6th plus 1, plus 3 to the 7th plus 1. Okay, and we are done there. So I can simplify each one of these. So this is going to be 82 plus 244 plus 730 plus 2187. So as far as expanded, I would count either this or this is expanded. And then the sum is adding all of those up for this one will be 3200 and 44. Okay, so here's another example. Uh, we have from k equals 2 up to 5 of 4k. Um, n is probably the most common variable, but it can be anything. So this would be 4 times 2 plus 4 times 3 plus 4 times 4 plus four times five. So we have eight plus 12 plus 16 plus 20. Add all of those together and we get 56. All right, for our next example, we have from r equals negative one to three of r squared minus r. So this is going to be negative 1 squared minus a negative 1. Then we're going to go up by 1. So my next one's going to be 0 squared minus 0. Next we're going to have 1 squared minus 1. 2 squared minus 2. And 3 squared minus 3. Okay, then I can simplify each one of these. So negative one squared minus a negative one is two. Zero minus zero is zero. One minus one is zero. Two squared minus two is two. And my last one, three squared, which is nine, minus three would be six. So this sum would be 10. Okay, next we have from k equals three up to seven of five. So if I try to plug this into here, there is no variable. So when k is three, my function gives me five. When k is four, 
we get 5. When k is 5, we get 5. When k is 6, we get 5. And when k is 7, we get 5. So we have 1 for 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And we just add those together to get 25. Okay, my next example I have from a equals 3 to 6 of the function 2a plus 3b. Okay, so we are going to plug in values for a but not for b. So this is going to be 2 times 3 plus 3b plus 2 times 4 plus 3b plus 2 times 5 plus 3b and our last one 2 times 6 plus 3b. Okay, so we'll simplify all of this. So I've got 6 and 8 and 10 and 12, which when added together gives me 36. And then I have 3, 6, 9, 12. B's. Alright, so next we are going to write a series uh, in sigma notation. So this is a series. Remember, a series is the sum of the terms of a sequence. So we're going to start with our sigma. Okay, I will fill in the variables here in a second, um, but let's just start with our general function. So some tips, if you recognize the series to be either arithmetic or geometric, we have a formula to write those equations. So this one would be arithmetic because we're adding by three. So remember the general equation for an arithmetic is a n equals a1 plus n minus 1 times d. This will give me my nth term. So for this one, we have 16 plus n minus 1 times our common difference of 3. Okay, you can write it like this. You can, and this is completely acceptable. I'm going to go ahead and simplify it. So we get 13 plus 3n. So over here, I'm going to say 3n plus 13. Now I need to come up with my starting values and my ending values. Okay, so my starting value, clean this up a little bit. Uh, if you use our nth term formulas, your starting value is always going to be 1. But we can double check it if I plug in 1. I'm going to get 16. My ending value is the number that I would plug in to get this 61 there. Okay, so I'm going to set, I'm going to go off to this side here, I'm going to set 61 equal to 3n plus 13. When I solve that, I get n is 16. So this is going to have a starting value of 1 and an ending value of 16 that would generate this series. Um, but there is more than one correct answer for this. In fact, there's an infinite number of ways. So maybe you looked at it and went, okay, um, if I start with five, this is three times five plus one, so three n plus one, and ended at 20, I would get the same series because we'd get 16, then we'd plug in 6 to get 18 plus 1 is 19. So both of these would generate the same series. Uh, my recommendation is to use our nth term formulas. That makes life easier, but you don't have to. Okay, so our next example here is a geometric series. So to get from term to term, we're multiplying. Um, in this case by 3. So I can do the general formula for a geometric series. So remember that is a1 
times r to the n minus 1. So for this one, my a1 is 2. My common ratio is 3 to the n minus 1. We're starting with 1. Anytime we're using our nth term formulas, then we could double check that because 1 minus 1 is 0. 3 to the 0 is 1, which gets me my 2. If I plug in 2, we get three, 2 times 3 to the 1, which would be 6. So then we just need to find our ending value. So we're looking for the n. That would satisfy this equation. Uh, so if I divide by 2, we get 2, 1, 8, 7 equals 3 to the n minus 1. Now to solve an equation like this, we have a variable that is in the exponent, and the tool we have for that is logarithms. Now you can just guess and check. They have to be whole numbers. You're not going to have a, a decimal as any um, part of sigma notation for the for the starting and ending values, um, or we just use logarithms. So if I take the log of both sides, and I'm just gonna do natural log, that allows me to bring down that exponent. Been a while. Okay, and then I divide both sides by the natural log of three. equals n minus 1 and then add to that. So this is going to give me 7 if you type it in the calculator, which means n is 8. So back up to my sigma notation. We'd start with 1, we'd end with 8, and again you can plug and chug to get that. Um, there is our sigma notation. Okay, so here is my last example. I have one half plus one fourth plus one sixth plus one eighth. Um, this is not arithmetic, it is not geometric, because if I were to add, I'd be adding, you know, to get from here to here, I'd be subtracting one fourth, but that wouldn't get me here. To multiply, I'd be multiplying by one half, but that doesn't get me that. But there's still definitely a pattern here. So on the top, it's always one. And then this bottom is, is arithmetic, so we've got 2, 4, 6, 8. Um, but that's a pretty easy pattern. If I just do 2n, that'll give me 2, 4, 6, 8, as long as I start with 1. For my ending value, there is no ending value. It just is plus dot, dot, dot. So my ending value is infinity. And starting next week, we are going to be dealing with infinite series, so series that continue forever, and talk about what features of those are. So tune in next week, but this is Sigma Notation.